okay? This used to be in Next.js as well. And at times I saw it go all the way up to like 300, 400 megabytes of memory. <laughs> and it just kind of got me thinking of like, why is it that a single static page needs so much memory? Because it really shouldn't. And so what I did is I refactored... <laughs> You know, I, I love this arc. I think every developer needs to go through this arc. Honestly, you do need to go through this arc where you go, why am I using this? Mu like, what I'm producing is simple. Why am I doing this? And, like, the, the thing is, is if you end up going back and you go back to doing all of this nonsense, right? You go back to using Next.js to generate a simple static website, and you're using a gajillion megabytes of memory. I don't blame you, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying that you're a horrible developer. I'm just saying if you've never gone down that road, if you've never even thought about this idea that why am I using so much? Like, it's such a useful journey to go down. It's so useful to actually try to figure out what the hell's even happening. Because if you look at the CPU, like, you're not even doing anything. You're not even like doing a single thing. Like, so why, 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 why are you using this much? What's happening? You should ask yourself, you should try different versions of languages and servers and see how this actually changes and see if you actually have, like, if you have a better experience, because you might just find out that you actually have a significant better experience in a different language. And you go, oh, wow, I actually really like this. I, I would have never known. But I'm glad that I tried this. And maybe you hate it. And that's fine. You hate it. You go back. You go back to PHP or whatever the hell you're, you're programming. And your microplastics are right back in your balls. But you at least enjoy the experience of doing something different for a while. I entered the starter kit to instead use Hona. And then also I have another application that I kind of worked on. This used to be in Next.js as well. Saw the same things where like the memory used to just kept getting higher. I refactored this to use Hona and Bun. Okay. So let's kind of look at the difference, right? So the funny thing is, is that... Uh, Hana and Bun, it's not even like it's that far different, right? You're still using JavaScript, which means you're going to be using JSC instead of V8. JSC still has a bunch of JIT information that it holds on to. You're still going to have a whole bunch of, uh, what's it called? You're still going to have a whole bunch of just memory being used by everything. It's just the way JavaScript works. Like if you use V8 and you inspect it with the performance tab, or not the performance tab, but the memory tab, and you start looking into functions, you'll see it like a lot of your functions just have 30K worth of optimization data just on every one of your functions, right? It just is what it is. You know, that's just JavaScript. That's what makes it att like attempting to be fast. So this is now hovering about 150. What you're looking at right here is the Hona implementation. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. And if we go over to Knowles Glass with Node, let's look at the memory usage of this hovering around 105. Granted, there's not much traffic hitting this site at all. But this is better. It's not great. I mean, I still think this is quite a lot of memory usage for a single application with very, very little traffic. Here's Bun. You can see that when I first deploy it, it's like 44 megs. And then again, that just slowly starts climbing and climbing and climbing. And then Garbage I did the deployment. That went back down to something lower, and then it starts climbing and climbing and climbing. And granted, in the grand scheme of things, like Railway only charges you like not that much money for like memory usage. But overall, when I have like this many projects deployed out and all of them slowly start creeping up in memory usage, either because it's like a garbage collection issue or there's memory leaks inside of Next.js or inside of the services. I don't know if Bun's production ready or not. It just got me thinking of like, why not just do something else? Why not just use Go? Use Rut. By the way, uh, Bun, JSC typically found it to be better for embedded. It just tends to use less memory, especially if you have a you can control like the garbage collection rate on it. Uh, but this is crazy. 400 megabytes to 100 something like that is it's, it's just it's rather wild, right? It's rather wild. JavaScript eating the world's memory. Trust. Use C. If this is the state with JavaScript, um, like why not just use something that's actually like performant from out of the box? So some of the investigation I've been kind of looking into is yeah. using Go. Go is another thing that I've used on my channel a couple times. I kind of just played around with it. But nice now language. I'm at the point where I actually might go more uh, all in on Go at this point. Now, granted, I just released a starter kit that uses Next.js. And I still think Next.js is a great way of like, you're a solopreneur or small team. You just need to get something out there. Yeah, you can move very, very fast with Next.js. And I, I would still probably, Fair. someone came to me and said, hey, I need something built. 
I would probably use Next.js. But in the grand scheme of things, I think we need to have a a philosophy or mindset change a little bit and try to achieve more with less. So let's look at the project that I refound. By the way, I, I do I, I think this is one thing that's a really amazing about game the game industry is often you don't have a choice. You actually have to like use less. You're kind of forced down this route of attempting to use less and less and less, and you must make room for other parts of the game system. So it actually like it makes you adopt this mentality where lines of code matter. Like something that was really interesting when I was working with a bunch of C++ devs is that every time I wrote a line of code, and even though it, it used another few bytes, like it wasn't even big amounts of bytes, they'd go, whoa, 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 whoa. We can't use that. You're, you're creating memory for no need. Don't do that. Right? Like their, their, their mentality was just so much different than my mentality. And it's because I, I kind of, you know, I've just, I ended up spending so much time in this JavaScript world. I kind of just forgot, right? I just forgot about why people did stuff. Uh, but instead, it's just their mentality is so different, which is why are you creating that? Oh, hey, don't do that. Don't create that. Use this. Oh, wait, you're doing this. Hey, do this. Right. And it's just like it's it was just such a different mentality. And even though it resulted in bytes being saved, maybe even a kilobyte being saved, it's just such a, a, a different hat to wear. Let's see. And this is what you get for running on embedded systems even more. You have to cut corners to make it fit. Exa exactly. And there's something really kind of cool about that there's something neat about that process and i do think it's really good to kind of at least attempt that mentality from time to time factored to go and i believe it's called um if i go to the promo site i have two implementations of a mailing list okay so one is in go and fiber and okay. one is in bun and hona so let's look at the bun and hona one if you go over here this is eating up 150 megabytes of memory for a very very simple page where uh, literally I'm seeing this across the board. So maybe this is a railway issue. Maybe railway has overhead yeah. to your services. But let's look at the Go and Fiber implementation. You're going to be blown away. This is using 11 megabytes of memory. When I first deploy it, it uses 6. And then it goes up to 11 megabytes of memory. Which is good because A, how much do I get charged for running a service that's 11 megabytes of memory? I get charged pennies on railway. Versus Bun and Hona, I'm going to get charged more. Now, secondly, the code between the Go implementation and the Bun implementation is very similar, right? There's like... I, I want to pause it for that previous moment. The, the thing that I think he's making a lot of sense with is that, sure, like if you're just one application running, it's not a big deal. But imagine if you have 50 applications and they're all taking up 400 megabytes. They're all taking up a lot. All of a sudden, your spend is just at... The, the angle is at just a, just a steeper incline. Your MX plus B your M's just a lot higher. And so it does make sense that as you scale more and more, using something that doesn't cost a whole lot makes a lot of sense. And for those that have never actually used a language like this or understand why this is, let me just give you a kind of a very simple explanation for why this happens. So in Go and in JavaScript, you can pretty much create the same thing. You can do uh, an object of some amount and it can have some keys and it can have some values. Now in the Let's just pretend these are also objects, arrays, strings. There's some thing, right? In Go and in JavaScript, they're both garbage collected. So it's not like you're getting out of garbage collection. This still exists. You'll get more memory usage, less memory usage. More memory usage, less memory usage. But the difference is, is that if you have a struct with a couple properties, you actually will get something that uses that much memory. And then there's going to be a small little handle for the GC to be able to keep track of some extra information. Whereas with JavaScript, it just has to have a whole bunch more information associated with it. Uh, it just has, a, it just, it somehow takes up so much more stuff. And why? I'm not actually particularly sure why it takes up more stuff. Second, with Go, you actually have access to the stack. Uh, the stack makes things a lot nicer. So if you have a stack allocated struct, it doesn't have to go out and grab all this information. It doesn't have to go and be put into the uh, garbage collection. It doesn't have to go and reserve all of it. Instead, you can have a struct that is just literally three ints, and they're all, they're all, uh, they're all just simply packed nicely. It takes whatever three ints would take—a hundred and eighty, a uh, hundred and whatever that would be, uh, sixty-four. That'd be hundred ninety-two, right? Take hundred ninety-two bytes, or hundred ninety-two bits. 
Whereas if you do the same thing with JavaScript, it can take significantly more because it has to do, there is no stack in JavaScript. You can get none of those optimizations. You have to use the heap for everything. The only thing that you don't use a heap for, the heap for as far as I know, is a small integer. Small integers are usually right around 32-bit or smaller integers. Anything like that, it actually uses your heap pointer and it has a little tag at either the front or the back that says, I'm a heap object or I'm an integer. And if it does that, then the rest of it is going to be your integer. All right, like that's its big memory optimization. So there you go. There's kind of like the basics. I, I, I've never really understood why it needs to use so much more memory than Go, uh, especially when Go allocates the same struct on the heap as JavaScript does, it just somehow uses so much more memory. So I'm sure it's just a bunch of more boxes that are going on. So every single one of your fields uh, ends up being a box in itself. And so therefore you just have, you know, instead of something being costing say uh, 32 bits or 64 bits, it ends up costing, you know, just a giant amount. It costs 1K worth of data just because of how much extra information it needs to have. And so then you get that distributed through every last one of your items. Uh, how'd you all come up at this point of knowledge? Just looking at things. Uh, so the JS node time or the JS runtime does use just a lot of memory to store the same amount of stuff. This sounds ridiculous as a C++ programmer. It should sound ridiculous as a C++ programmer. I mean, that's one reason why I've really just enjoyed using Zig because it's just like whenever I allocate something, I know exactly what I'm allocating. I'm like, I make this much memory and I let go of this much memory. And that's it. Like there's no, there's no, I don't have to like try to like imagine how much memory are you actually using, which is a very hard thing to work through in your brain. To play this game of let's reduce memory of a JavaScript application is really hard because you don't actually know how much memory things use. And Go is just a way more efficient version of it. And the nice part about Go, another thing that makes Go way more memory efficient that I forgot to uh, mention is that when you're using JavaScript, every single function could be jitted. And just-in-time compilation. Wait, just-in-time uh, just in time compilation, right? And that requires a bunch of information to be stored. Whereas Go, it's compiled. It already does all the optimizations it needs to do, and then it just runs. So it doesn't have to keep track of any of that extra information. So all the stuff that needs to be kept around for a whole bunch of time does not need to happen. It already did the optimization, which is why like some people are always talking about why like Wasm is going to be really good is because you can do all of this. Uh, you can do all of this ahead of time. 